If you have livestock, then this probably looks familiar. Whether it's early spring, early winter, or any other rainy time of the year, it's mud season on a farm. You can fix this by installing heavy traffic or heavy use areas for your livestock. And we're gonna show you how to do that in today's video. Fix this nasty, muddy situation. Even on the rainiest, nastiest days, your heavy use areas can look this dry. We're gonna show you how in today's video. So today we're going to be excavating out the organic material, the uh, topsoil. We're gonna to be putting in a little shy of a foot worth of material. We're gonna be doing about six inches of heavy stuff and then about three inches of the lighter stuff. So somewhere around nine inches. Uh, underneath the gravel is gonna be some geotextile fabric. Uh, what that does is it creates a barrier so your gravel doesn't get pushed down into the dirt because cows with their heavy feet will push gravel down into the dirt and it'll disappear. The record to show record that we took a coffee break. <laughs> the workforce has been complaining that uh, I don't do coffee breaks anymore. Mm. Did I do Bye. more coffee breaks when I worked for you? Oh, every day. Never <laughs> oh, no. Absolutely not. I had to have that. So. Coffee break was a must when I was an employee. How do you like your home study hoodie? Oh, this is actually nice. You know, I don't ever wear stuff like this. I know, that's a... I, I never wear a hat. I've never seen you in a... I, I just, I wear a visor just to keep the sun out of my eyes, but... Boy, this is... Toasty. Yeah, I like it. Feels good. Hey, before I forget, Monday we have Greg Judy coming on the Home Study Live from the Barn show. He is here to talk about grazing animals. Greg Judy is an awesome source of information on pasturing livestock, making a living doing so, and he's gonna join us to talk all about it. If you're a Home Study Pioneer, you can join us live for that show and you can ask Greg questions. Click here to become a Home Study Pioneer and don't miss out on Monday night's live show with Greg Judy. So I want to show you when you're building one of these livestock gravel mats, I want to show each piece of the puzzle here. Uh, first you can see the geotextile fabric which is on the ground first. That's a very strong fabric. What that does is it creates a barrier so when the animals are stepping on your gravel, they're not pushing it down into the mud. Eventually if you don't put that fabric paper there, the animals will push all the gravel down and it'll disappear. The next step is our, our stone here. So we have a very large stone. You can see on this side, uh, we're putting the larger stone first. Larger stone is gonna take up a lot more space. There's gonna be a lot more cracks in there for water to move through. But that large stone isn't good for cows to be stepping on or people to be stepping on. You're likely to roll an ankle. Can you grab a handful of that, buddy? So after we, after we put the large stone down, we go to this smaller gravel. This is two inch gravel here. And you can see that gravel, when you walk on it, you nobody's gonna roll an ankle on this gravel. The whole project, everywhere we're doing the same geotextile fabric, larger gravel, and then the smaller gravel on the top. Some people even go beyond that, they'll put sand on top of it, which we considered, if we were cleaning it every day, I'd wanna put sand on top of it. 
Because we're gonna keep the livestock off this for the most part, we're not doing the sand right now. Uh, the sand we may add later if we find we wanna keep animals on it more longer term. So that's each piece of the puzzle there. This stone here good, is... Good rock model over here. This stone here is probably a fine inch, uh, five inch and minus, which means you'll find mostly five inch, but also smaller stuff in it. Is this cheaper? The bigger uh, stuff? Do you know I don't know. I, well, generally, the cheaper stuff is, is cheaper because they don't have to break the it down. Stuff they don't have to break it down. But that's what we're using here. So you'll find a mixture of generally five inch stone, but mixed in with smaller stuff. So they call that minus. Like you could order six inch and minus, which means you'd get a variety of, not every stone is going to be five inch. The same with the smaller stuff. Yeah, we have some two inch, and then we have even, I mean, some of that's like pea gravel. This is the first cold project we've done for this year that I've been using my new Carhartt overalls. These things are great. They're super warm and toasty. You can work in them, but the thing I like the most about them is when it gets warm like it is right now, you unzip the leg and then you just pull your boot right out. I don't want to have to like take my shoes off to get my insulated overalls off. I don't want to be standing in the mud with my shoes off, dancing around, falling over. So having a pair like that that are nice and warm for that early morning cold, but then as it warms up in the day, I get warm in the machine, I can just pop them off, keep moving. Awesome. Link below for the Carhartt overalls, insulated. Great, great farm winter gear. traffic livestock pad whatever you want to call it it's that's it's done now we're gonna extend it but if you're going to do one on your homestead that's how you do it you put the geotextile paper down first then you put the big four inch gravel and then the smaller two inch on top if you want to get really fancy do a really nice job you can finish it out with sand it would be easier to clean it uh, if you're going to have your animals on it more. We may do that in the future. But that's your basic, uh, basic livestock pad right there. Okay, so we finished installing our gravel pads. Fast forward a couple weeks, I want to give you an update of how they actually are working. As you can see, we got a tremendous downpour of a storm. It was a mix of heavy rains, a little bit of sleet and slush, 
Everywhere where there is not gravel is a muddy, mucky mess. But the minute you get onto the gravel pads, they are dry, they are firm. I can walk around on them in my Crocs and not even get my socks dirty. The cows can walk around on them, they have support under their feet, their hooves are dry. I wish I could turn the entire lower paddock into one of these heavy traffic areas because there still is mud in the back there, but man, wherever there's gravel, the water comes flying off the hill, it gets in the gravel, it runs down and into our curtain drains, which then takes the water away. It has been a huge improvement. Now here's the thing, this video showed you how to make gravel pads, but it didn't show you how to make the curtain drains that take the water away. So click here to watch this playlist. It'll show you the video on how to make curtain drains and you'll learn a few other things you can do to improve your farm or your homestead.